stage, we're talking about proportions. First, we're going to kind of talk about what they are. We have to know what they are before we can get into kind of the meat of what we're talking about, which is how are proportions solved and why are they useful, okay? We'll look at four different ways that, or four different types of problems that we can solve that involve proportions, okay? First of all, we got to know what proportions are, and proportions are equations that show that two ratios are equal. That two ratios are equal. Now, if you're not sure, a ratio is essentially a fraction. So when you see that word ratio, your brain can think fraction. Example, one half equals two fourths. Those are two ratios that are equal. We could equal three sixths on there. We could talk about three, but usually we just talk about two. In general, what we do is we say A over B, that's a fraction. A divided by B equals C divided by D. Okay? So that's an equation. We can solve equations. Here's what we do. Four proportions. The proportions, in order to solve them, we use something called the cross product. Okay? What that says is that the product, which means multiply, the product of the means equals or is equal to the product of the extremes. So we need to identify what the means are and what the extremes are. If we look up here at this example, if this a over d equals b over excuse me, a over b equals b over c, the extremes are a and b. The means are b and c. So what we're saying here is that A times D, so in this example, A times D, those are our, those are our extremes. Think of it this way, when we were writing that portion, A over B equals C over D. A and B are what we do first and last, they're kind of the extremes. Their product is equal to the product of the means, B, C. Those are the means because they're in the middle, the average. Think mean, average, middle, okay. But what's most important is that we think about that AB equals BC. That works for any proportion, anywhere, anytime. You can multiply those in their products. That word product means multiply. They will be equal. And so now we have an equation we can solve a little bit easier. In fact, let's give a couple a try. I have three for you to try. Uh, the first one, 4 over 9 equals r plus 3 over 45. Second one, 9 plus m over 5 equals 15 over 4. Okay, and the third one, 25 over 75 equals 80 over 5x. Okay, give these your best shot. Multiply them, use that cross product. Product of the means equals the product of the extremes. Ready, go. Okay, check them. How did you do? Notice, um, in each one we did two products. Right here, we did the product, that 4 times 45, and on the other side, 9 times the quantity r plus 3. We had to do the distributive property there. Okay, same thing here, more distributive property, because we were multiplying by an entire quantity in the numerator. Okay? And then in the last one, no distributive property, although we do have this 25 times 5 to give us 125. Okay, once we set up and multiply, it's pretty easy to solve. Then you're just going to follow the process, right? We Look at that first one. Subtract 27 from both sides, divide by 9. Pretty easy way to get that one done.
Okay, same thing in the next one. Subtract 36. That last one all you had was a coefficient. So that one is really nice to solve. Okay, so we, we kind of know how to solve these. We have that down. Um, and if not, we'll continue to practice and you will be awesome at it. But we need to talk about why these are important. So we're going to take a look at four ways that this is important. So we have four applications where you might see these in problem solving. And the reason these are applications is because they all use that idea of fractions, right? A proportion is equivalent ratios. We know that. That means we have a fraction equal to a fraction. Well, here, we're going to use these ideas in terms of their fraction examples. So in terms of percent, when we talk about percents, a percent is out of 100. So when we make that fraction, if it's 5%, it's 5 out of 100. That's what 5% is, 5 over 100. So right there, there's already a fraction. Now in terms of problems where we have percents, we'll compare it to part over whole. You guys do this a lot when you're checking your percentage on a test. You divide the number you got right, that's the part, divided by the whole. And then you can look at, okay, okay, I need to turn that into something out of 100 because then, that I, then I know my percentage. Okay, so percentage is one type of problem that we do. So you want our rates. Speed is a great example of a rate. For example, miles per hour. Another one is when people type, they measure it in terms of their words per minute. Okay, or in like physics or something, you might see meters per second. Okay, that same idea of percent. These can all be written as fractions. Miles over hours. Words over minutes. That word per tells us to divide. Okay, so if we did 55 miles per one hour, we could figure out how many miles in six hours by setting up a proportion. So we are going, what you end up doing here, what we are going to do here is set up an equation using those equivalent ratios. Okay. Similar figures, that's the third one down. Now similar figures you study in geometry and similar figures has the word proportion in its definition. For two figures to be similar, their corresponding angles have to be congruent. Okay, so that means that the angles that are in the same place are congruent. Corresponding sides are in proportion. So that means the ratio between all the side lengths is always the same. Okay, similar figures, the corresponding sides are in proportion, and that's what we need to keep in mind. That means the ratios of the side lengths always are equal. And so we can set their fractions equal to each other. And that's how we're going to use similar figures, or use proportions to help us solve similar figures. You've done that. That should feel very familiar. Okay, the last one is indirect measurement. This one's kind of got a lengthy definition. There's certain things we cannot measure. You cannot necessarily go outside with a ruler and measure the flagpole. That doesn't make sense. You wouldn't be able to climb up. I mean, you'd really have to work. You'd like have to shimmy and slide the ruler, and oh my gosh, it'd be awful. Okay, I wouldn't be able to do it. I would fall, and people would laugh, and it would be awful. And so what we do instead is we do something called indirect measurement, where we're setting up, okay, what can we measure? And if we can measure that, how can we use that information to later on determine Right? You may have seen it or heard it or seen problems where you do it with shadows. If you know your, how tall you are, and you know the length of your shadow, you can compare that to the height of the flagpole in terms of the length of its shadow. And that's that idea of indirect. Measure what you can so that way you kind of have the ability to solve for what's missing. It's a process. Okay? Indirect measurement is a process. That idea of using known lengths. Now, when we say known lengths, you know the length of your shadow, or you could measure it pretty easily. You know how tall you are. That's stuff you know, and you then set up some similar figures. This one's definitely related to the one before, right? 
known lengths and similar figures and use proportions to solve for what's left. So we're going to use that to solve for what's unknown, what's left over. Okay? That's four different types of problems that you are going to see with proportions. Now, most of these will be in terms of word problems. Okay, so I don't have any for you to try, but we'll definitely take a really close look at them in class. All right? You'll get you'll get very, very good at it. That word per will become super like in drilled in your brain that yep, per means fraction. Okay. Or similar figures. Okay, these two figures are similar. What can I do? Well, I'm going to make a proportion. You want to set up proportions. When you're dealing with fractions, it's, it's pretty easy to solve proportions. We talked about that already. We looked at the cross product. Okay. So in terms of these word problems, we want to live in that land of proportions. We're going to look for fractions that should be equal and set them equal to one another. And we'll do lots of practice with that when you have your worksheet. In the meantime, give me a little summary. What is important to know about proportions? What are they? Okay, that was one of the questions we want to answer. What are proportions? How do we solve them? Okay, those are two things you definitely know now. You know what a proportion is. It's an equation where the fractions are equal, or an equation showing equal fractions. How do you solve them? Well, I use the product of the means equal to the product of the extremes. Get that idea in your brain. Means extremes, the cross product. And then what are some applications? Well, I know I can use them for percents. I know I can use them for rates. Okay, So they're definitely useful in all of these problems. That's what we're going to take more of a look at in class.